Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Buck Moorhead. I'm an, I'm an architect, uh, principal of Buck Moorhead Architect, uh, and I'm also a certified passive house designer. We're, uh, our firm is based in Manhattan. Uh, we also have a presence in uh, the uh, Catskill, Upper Delaware region of New York State. Uh, I'm joined here uh, with uh, and by Kevin Dunathan, who is the owner of Aspen and Ash Development. Uh, Kevin was our construction manager on our project. Aspen and Ash is based in East Mauritius uh, on Long Island. Uh, I'll give you a, a quick context of the project. We were uh, hired to do an, a substantial retrofit of an existing house uh, on Long Island. Uh, that it turned out the foundation was bad. It turned into a new build. It was a, a passive house, passive house designed, but uh, was not going for certification. The project. Uh, we uh, uh, started work with a, a contractor who had passive house experience. Uh, he worked for about a year, over well over a year on the project, substantially framed. Uh, substantially under roof, uh, substantially sheathed and uh, with finished siding, uh, ready for all the rough-ins. And uh, at that moment in time, uh, there was an owner's rep retained on the project. Uh, the owner's rep decided that uh, there should be a timeout in the construction for what was projected to be two to four weeks. That uh, after six to eight months of that timeout, our GC resigned from the project. So uh, we were there with uh, a building that wasn't fully watertight uh, and we needed a contractor. And somehow we convinced Kevin to do it here. <laughs> so Kevin, uh, you know, finished the, we finished this project together, but Kevin was the man on it, uh, taking us through. So I, I wanted to uh, with that as a setup, and Kevin had not done a passive house before, uh, though he had other experience with lead and the such. So I, I will uh, introduce Kevin and just say, I'm gonna use my uh, questioning, uh, my little cheat sheet here with questions. Can you uh, talk about your initial approach to gaining an understanding of passive house for the project as one of your early CM tasks was to provide a project budget? Yeah, uh, of course, and uh, I should say thank you for uh, for the opportunity to do this with you. This is uh, good to see you uh, again, and uh, and um, I'm happy to, to be here. So, uh, for for myself, what I what I did was, um, you know, I leaned on my experience. Uh, I had I had a decent amount of experience doing uh, lead certified projects. Um, we did a lead silver building in uh, in New York City. Um, so I had, a, I had a basic knowledge of, 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 of the type of construction that we were getting involved with. Um, but, you know, in addition to that, I, I went online and I did my research on Passive House and try to learn as much as I, I could from, uh, from the information I got, on, um, you know, online and just, just uh, you know, I worked with a few of our subcontractors who have done passive house projects before and um you know basically got the concept down and um you know planned planned our budget accordingly okay were there uh, i know that one of the uh, issues that we had with the structure when the work was stopped was that the uh the siding wasn't completely finished and we had a proclima fabric membrane uh that was exposed uh, way beyond what was recommended by the manufacturer to sunlight. And you had to go in and actually do that, take that, uh, replace that fabric, uh, which was developing and it was containing insulation. And so you had to kind of develop how you would intended to do that. And what, you know, we went a little backwards and, uh, and we introduced you, I think at that time to 475 uh, to get their assistance on it. But do, uh, uh, can you explain how you may have approached that and did it involve details and materials you 
had not encountered before. Yeah, of course. So I did a full inspection of the exterior shell of the home to identify all those areas and, um, and to see what would be involved into getting back to, you know, satisfactory membrane to where we could attach to and, 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 and re reskin the building. You know, one of our challenges was there was a, there was an ins blown in insulation in currently in place. So we ended up um, rather than removing the uh, membrane that was uh, exposed to the elements too long, we left it in place and, um, and, and, and installed uh, the Mento Plus membrane over that, um, fully covering all, all the existing uh, membrane that was exposed, um, opening up some of the siding, getting back to really, you know, unexposed clean surface that we can attach to um, and trying to just maintain that, uh, that insulation barrier without, without, without losing that and costing the uh, client a lot more money to have to re-spray re, re all that. Since you were essentially taking this project on half finished, there were obviously a lot of challenges in completing it. Were there any aspects of the existing construction that actually made your job easier? Besides, of course, uh, our, our amazing team, Laura and others, uh, that made you think differently about how to approach construction? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that was a great question. Uh, one of the reasons why we decided to to get involved with this endeavor was was because of you guys uh, and your understanding of passive house and and your experience. The fact that you guys were staying and and oversaw the you know the initial construction was was a tremendous uh, asset for us because um, you know you guys had. Uh, you know, pre-con photographs, you, you know, a, a progress photographs that we could, you could share with us that we could, you know, see areas that were currently covered that were, you know, we, we, we kind of knew what was going on underneath there. So that helped us uh, plan for, you know, what we needed to do. Um, and again, and, and the fact that, you know, when we ran across something that we weren't, you know, we were unsure of, or if we did some research and we were still a little unclear, we could, we could call you guys. And you guys, you know, run out to the site, meet with us, and um, and go over, you know, these passive house details. That, and 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 you really you, you educated me personally and our guys, uh, you know, in a in a great way. That we still use those practices now, even on projects that we're not, you know, that aren't passive. We just we just gained a new understanding of of what it means, uh, you know, to be to be airtight. Um, to create thermal breaks when we can and stuff that we didn't, these, these words, we didn't, um, we didn't, we weren't speaking these words before we had met you guys. I have to make it clear. I did not, there's no payment that went between Kevin and I for that. <laughs> that was, uh, but to hear that it, it's, it was quite interesting. And I'm just going to say is that this, you know, passive house is, is a way of, of, it's just a great building practice. You know, it, it basically leads to buildings that are so durable. Uh, they're just built the right way. You know, they're going to have better indoor air quality, less opportunities for mold, mildew, degradation of structure. I mean, it's interesting. Like, I just don't, I find myself in situations not wanting to say that, you know, talk to people about the passive house because it, it should just be, as you just said, that it's just becomes built into the way you do building. You know, it's like you don't tell a client you're going to keep the water out of the house or you're going to make sure it stands up. You know, those are things you do automatically. And I think this is in that category. You know, this kind of building practice is there. Uh, and I appreciate that you've kind of carried that into your own work, it seems. Uh, do you have a favorite or least favorite high performance building detail on this project? or something that was either particularly difficult to get right or something that was really satisfying to work out? I would say that, uh, that the ERV system certainly was something that our HVAC guy had not done a ton of. Um, so we kind of held each other's hand getting through that. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it uh, seems to be, I was in the house the other day and it, it's really functioning well. The, the clients are very happy. The fact that we were, we were installing 
the system in a, in, a, in a house that we didn't frame. We didn't prepare the framing for it. So there was a lot of, you know, areas that we had to prepare blocking and, and, and just, you know, put headers in and, and, and you know, just prepare for that. But, um, you know, the other fact was that this house um, was a modern design. It was a very contemporary design with a lot of vaulted ceilings and a lot of open areas to where you have limited access to run these pipes. And that's where I think we worked great together. Um, you and your team and, and, and our team, uh, we have a tremendous subcontractor base that that does well in those in those situations also we ended up hiring a consultant from zender uh he he's a he's a he's an expert in that system um and he came out to the site before we started cheat rock and you know we had some issues that we 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 you know wouldn't have known about if we didn't bring him on board so mm -hmm. um you know, he was great. You know, he, he's a consultant. He, he, he works on a, you know, a fee. He, he, he bit the bullet, paid that fee and had him come out to the site. And, and it was, uh, it was well worth, well worth the money because, you know, if you find an issue after you're done sheet rocking, you know, you have to, you have to rip open walls. And we said, uh, we got to get this guy in here. And, um, and he was great. He actually came back after we were um, done sheet rocking and, and certified the, the units, um, which yeah. is part of what the owner needs for their for their warranty. So it was, uh, it was turned out to be a really good thing. No, excellent. I'm no, and I'm sure that that consultant fee was well below whatever it might have cost to Absolutely. kind of try to fix something after the fact. You know, the bottom line is we, we, we have to sleep at night and we have to make sure we're doing the right thing. You know, we learned a whole bunch from him yeah. in the process. So it was good. Very cool. It takes uh, obviously a lot of people and teams with particular expertise to execute a high performance building like this one. We're finding it increasingly helpful to have contractors and craftsmen involved early on in the design process to help work out some of the very particular details, kind of like what we're talking about now uh, of high performance buildings well before a contractor would typically be involved. How do you feel about the typical sequential design bid build model on projects like these? Do you feel that feel like that adds the the contractor too late in the game to really hone in on on the best and most efficient way to execute some of the tricky details we know are in high performance buildings like this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we want to be involved with the architect and the client as early on in the process as possible because you know it gives us an advantage to share our you know professional experience our, our value engineering and and, and 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 stuff like that to where we can make an impression on an architect or an owner early on and 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 get a favored contractor to, to build the job um but unfortunately that that's not that's not what we see. If we're in that situation where it's a traditional, you know, you know, um, design bid build model, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can to to qualify our bid uh, during that initial phase. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times we will have clients that will will choose us because even though we're not the lowest, you know, mm -hmm. they're savvy, they're savvy uh, buyers, and and they they, you know. They get that input from us early on. They can see that we're taking it serious. We're professional. We we know what we're talking about, and we're not we're not you know implementing things that are just looking to drive up costs, but we're actually implementing things that are going to extend the life of their home. And that's ultimately what you know. When we walk away from a project, we we want to have a a long term relationship with the architect and the client, and we want to um, we want to have something that uh, they're going to be able to have for a long time and not have issues with. So. This was an extremely demanding project to execute properly and, and finish on, on all levels. How do you feel about Passive House now that the dust has settled? Would you do another one? Absolutely. Um, we are, we're actually in, 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 in talks with another um, architect and a, and a client uh, for another project in the Hamptons. Luckily enough, I was able to you know, walk this potential client through our project and share our knowledge with them. And they were extremely knowledgeable, this, this client. Um, 
they they are really into the passive idea the concept um you know they, they want to have a, a super high efficient home that low energy consumption um you know so when you start speaking their language that they've they've been, they've been researching this for a year and a half so they're very knowledgeable so then when we can show them a system that they've looked into and now they see it in a house working and that we installed it it, it just it, it raises our game um you know and then i could speak more confidently about the process and the passive house and, and and what goes into it and 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 so so it's been a great collaboration with with this new client um this time we'd like to do it from the beginning rather than coming in uh you know halfway through having uh having having the ability to uh you know quality control the, the the exterior we're not even speaking of the level the quality of the work that was required at that project as well yeah so the, the passive house was one aspect but yeah the, the yeah. high level of finish that that the client demanded and that that you designed and that we we, were, we executed was um that's a whole nother story all in itself so that was multiple challenges on that one that was that was really yeah. that, was, that was a really great experience for us yeah no to get, likewise to get yeah. through and and now look at it from through the rearview mirror and say wow we you know we learned we learned a lot from that um again i know when when we had first met uh, you know, I, you believed in us and, and you, you took a leap of faith with our company and we, 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 we appreciate that. I mean, you know, uh, we hadn't worked together before on any project mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we have a symbiotic relationship. I feel like we, we, we work well together and, um, you know, I just want to say thank you. That was, it was, it was a good experience for us. It was, it was, that's a good, it, I, I felt that way. Uh, no question. I mean, I was trying to convince you to do this project because I did have faith in you, but I knew you were making a tremendous leap into a, a bit of an unknown situation with all that was unknown about the project to you. So it was a shared situation that, uh, so ha happy to be here talking to you about it like this and in this venue with uh, this particular uh, uh, panel. And yeah, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a pleasure.